But before that, time for the next In Our Men Kind series. Now, last night we looked at the part that ethnicity plays in your chances of getting diabetes. Tonight we're looking at what we can do to combat this growing problem triggered when your blood glucose level is too high. Our Men Kind ambassador, Darren Eady, is here along with Professor Keaton Dataria, consultant in diabetes at the Norfolk and Norwich University Hospitals NHS Foundation Trust. Good evening, gentlemen. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Uh, we're going to chat to you in a moment, but first, here's a little reminder of what we're talking about. About. Yes, as you may know, there are largely two types of diabetes. Type 1 cannot be prevented and is not linked to lifestyle. About 8% of those with diabetes have this type. 90%, however, have type 2, which is largely preventable through lifestyle changes and is the one we're going to focus on this evening because it's actually spiralling out of control in the UK. Now then, the latest figures were released in February, which show that 1 in 10 over 40s now has type 2 diabetes, while the overall number living with all types of diabetes has reached 4.7 million. If it carries on as it is, 5.5 million will have the disease by 2030. Well, those figures are absolutely staggering, aren't they? Uh, Professor, how have we got to the point where diabetes just seems to be out of control almost? It's essentially largely related to people's weight and there's a big relationship between what you eat and, how, and what you do. So it's energy in and energy out. And if you do less and eat more than you need, then you gain weight. And there's an almost exponential relationship between your risk of developing diabetes and how heavy you are, That's unfortunately. Simple. Mm. It really is, yeah. Right. It is interesting though, isn't it? Because obesity, one indicator of type two diabetes, but it's not the only one. And, and Darren, you, you had a scare yourself and quite clearly you're not in the category of obese. Thank you, Jonathan. Not at all, it's fine. No, yeah, I mean, I was, I was um, sort of pre-diabetic, I guess, the, yeah. score of, the score of 41 when I had the test in 2017. So for me, it was a bit of a wake-up call as to looking at my diet. And I assumed it was all around sugars, around fizzy drinks, sweets, because I do like to have a few of them at times. So, but it's not. It's about, obviously, the protein you eat, fats, any kind of fat you have inside your, inside your body. So um, you, you went for this test, it was your MOT40 check, which I think is brilliant. Uh, you decided recently to retest mm. to see whether it had gone up or down. Yeah. Were you nervous about what might happen? Yeah, I was because I haven't changed anything from the first time I had it. So it's interesting for me as, as you grow older, the risk is more. So I wondered if within those few years anything had changed at all. So for me, it was wondering, have I slipped into that pre-diabetic uh, region or have I stayed around the same? Now, we should just sort of say at this stage, we're going to see the test now. Uh, for the squeamish, we should just say at this stage, there's, there's no actual entry level we're going to see are we no no it did hurt just a little bit it was very <laughs> sore yeah at the point of contact i promise and uh, as you know um you know it is uh, uh, something that we want to make sure that everybody has good luck at and uh, the doctor who did the test dr david led was, was brilliant and he started by telling me a little bit about the test itself covers things like your, your sugar levels and your cholesterol levels and things like that. Is that okay with you? Yeah, fine. I mean, you look at me, you'd think I'd be relatively decent, wouldn't you? I mean, I'm not sure, sure, mate. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, obviously you're looking at me, you'd think that I'd have a, a low cholesterol and be really healthy, but my cholesterol's quite high, so it is worth checking these things out because you can, can get surprises. Um, and of course, you know, it's, it's helpful to know so you can do something about that because um, yeah. things are always reversible. And with diabetes, I do like the sweets and fizzy drinks. Is that something that would, would show up? Yeah, no, it would show up. So the test is quite clever because it looks back six weeks and, and says what's your average blood sugar been over those six weeks. So, right. yeah, there's no, yeah, there's no, no cheating. hiding place. No, no. Oh dear. Does that feel a bit tight? No, that's fine, yeah. Can't look. No. Not me. <laughs> did it hurt, actually? It did a little bit, but I mean, because with, with the kids, I probably would have preferred a bit of numbing cream, like the kids have. But <laughs> being 43, I don't get the opportunity to have that anymore. Yeah. So it only needs that much, does it need no, not two or three vials? No, that's it, yeah. I'm sure you can recover that pretty quickly. A cup of tea or something. <laughs> So that's it basically Darren, we've taken the blood, um, that goes out to the labs and we get the results within about 24 hours actually, so you won't have to wait long. That's really quite quick then, that's not just a special one for me is it? Is that what no, no, yeah, yeah. everybody gets that, yeah, yeah. You are a very brave boy. Thank you very much, I've got a sticker and everything, it's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, let's cut to the chase though, what was the result? 
thankfully, I can say it was exactly the same as it was in 2017. So I was 41, which is um, still in the, the normal range, considering the age since then. I think that's, that's pretty pleasing, certainly. Yeah. yeah, what's your advice to Darren now you know that it hasn't changed? Uh, so I think there are some things you can do. Obviously, one would always say that you, know, you want to make sure your diet is as sensible as it can be, and that's fine. You, you, you can keep going. Uh, everything in moderation is what mm. I would say. There's no such thing as a diet for somebody with diabetes. Uh, but actually, I would keep getting it checked if you've got a family history of somebody with diabetes or if you've got high blood pressure and so on, then yes, it would be worthwhile getting your diabetes checked every year or so. Yeah. And will you change, do you think? I'll probably I'll have to go have the, have the test again in a few years' time. Yeah. But, you know, everybody should have the NHS health check that comes through the post yeah. as well at 40 years of age. It surprises me. It's free. Yeah. Yet so many people decide not to have it done. It yeah. just seems bizarre. Are and, you and not yeah, tempted, sorry, sorry Jonathan, yeah. to, to try and get that lowered? Yeah. by? Because you told me you have a sweet tooth. Yeah, I'm very competitive as well. So, if, if, right. yeah, I, I would like to, but I don't think you can ever... It's, not, it's between, I think, 30 and 40... Two is yeah. is kind of normal range, so I, I'm, you can never get it down to zero, I presume, because you have to have some kind of fats yeah. and sugars in your body anyway. Final word for now to you, Professor, about anyone watching this who's slightly alarmed. Um, if you're alarmed, go and see your GP. But of course, if you've got any risk factors developing diabetes, if you're overweight or obese, if you have a family history of diabetes, if you've had gestational diabetes, so you developed diabetes when you were pregnant, then you should have a regular check at your GP just to make sure you're OK. OK, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, don't worry if you missed any of the advice. There's loads of information on our website right now at itv.com slash Anglia, including a report on the role ethnicity plays in diabetes and tips from another expert as well. But there's also a chance for you to put your questions to the professor here, as well as telling us about your experiences with diabetes straight after this programme, live on our Facebook page. So please get in touch right now. But for a few minutes, our thanks to Darren and Professor Dettaria as well.